so the idea is to really understand what do we what do we really mean by regularization right regularize regularizing a solution now now if you simply revisit the, uh, the least squares problem right where we had j of x and we had let us say a norm of uh, what is that we had um, of y minus a x square right this is, where, this is what this is what we solved and then with respect to least square solution we got some answer now let us modify it okay let us modify it to incorporate to incorporate a prior to incorporate a prior about x right now such a prior okay is normally very very well known in the sense that these are generic priors these are not really made specific in the sense that you're not trying to do it specifically for for a kind of, kind of certain class of image or something a texture or face or something this is a generic prior what do we mean by that we say that we modify j of x such that it becomes norm y minus a x square plus lambda times let's say norm q x square okay suppose right this is called a prior and this is your observation term this is your observation term and gan this lambda is called a regularization parameter okay now what does this all mean right i mean okay prior to understand what we mean by okay, how this actually brings in stability how this helps improve the condition number and so on right prior to that all uh, right let's first understand what's what is this q acting on x now this q could be an identity now q very typically will be some kind of smoothness okay this will signify the operator itself will not be a smooth operator but then this whole prior okay let me call not q but rather let me say that the prior okay is typically a smoothness prior smoothness what does what does that mean that means locally right uh, you know intensities do not change rapidly okay locally intensity is also looks looks somewhat similar so what is called a markovian prior right? which we have seen seen earlier also which is a very very generic thing right any image any any kind of natural image that you see around you you'll find that the intensity is within a local region will somewhat look similar okay they are actually expected to look similar so this q will actually enforce that so one one form of q could be that it could be a laplacian operator which then means that it lenses that the x that you're trying to estimate should not only follow the observation model but will also also follow the prior to some extent depending upon lambda which is a weighting parameter because q times x will give you a laplacian right of the image which is like which is like how the second gradient is changing and and because you are because you are trying to minimize the effect you are saying that uh, that the the energy in the laplacian should be low that means you are trying to say that the image should be locally smooth you can also go for q to be identity right in which case all that you will have is you know norm x square okay that will be like a simple gaussian prior okay that can be that is also possible you can go for a gaussian prior you can also you can also go for other forms of q you can have you can have you know instead of one term right you can have actually two terms here right? one could be like norm of uh, first derivative with respect to x of x okay square and then plus uh, you know dy second derivative with respect to square and then you can multiply this by lambda and then you have the observation term here you can have various forms for this but the whole idea is that right you are trying to we are trying to bring in a prior okay prior knowledge about x because you believe that even even without seeing the observation model i know for a fact that my x is locally smooth okay that's what you are incorporating if you know more about x you can always throw all that in into this framework now let's go back and do what we did before let's let's try to solve do j by do x okay let's do let's do do j by do x now j itself right let's first write it down let's first expand j if you expand j what do you get for j let's first expand j so j of x is equal to y minus ax the whole transpose into y minus ax plus lambda qx transpose into qx or in other words this is equal to y transpose minus x transpose a transpose into y minus ax plus lambda x transpose q transpose qx or in other words j of x is equal to from here right what do you find you find it's y transpose y the first term is y transpose y the second half cuz all these are scalars okay j of x is just a number minus 2 y transpose ax as we did before minus 
y transpose ax minus 2 y transpose ax plus x transpose a transpose ax. This is what we had even earlier, x transpose a transpose ax when we did least squares, if you remember. But now, but now we have an additional term coming in the form of a prior, which is lambda x transpose q transpose q x. Right? You see here, that is what it is. Okay. Now, taking dou j by dou x, right, will give you minus 2a transpose y plus 2a transpose ax. Now, you know, now you guys are familiar you know, with respect to what to do. And this is again a symmetric matrix, therefore it will be q2, q transpose q x is equal to 0. Or in other words, you are like a transpose a a plus q transpose q the whole into x, okay, x has to multiply from the right, it's a vector, is equal to a transpose y. Or in other words, x hat is equal to a transpose a plus q transpose q. Okay, there should be gamma here, uh, lambda here. I forgot to put that lambda. So there should be lambda, the, the regularization parameters should be there. This q transpose q, the whole inverse a transpose y. So now if you see the solution, if you compare the solution with the least square solution that you had, then you had a transpose a inverse a transpose y. Now you have an additional term coming here. Now this prior, okay, this is your prior, right? The q was the prior, Laplacian or whatever. Now this prior improves the condition number of a transpose a, improves the condition number of a transpose a. Condition number of a transpose a. Now if you go back to that example, that I gave you, right, which was a, which was a very, very, you know, uh, you know bad, you know, kind of, you know, an example where A was very ill-conditioned. We had one, 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 one point triple zero one. You could have said that, you know, I can add some entries to the eigenvalues, you know, because we know that the eigenvalue spread was very high. So you could have said, why not I just arbitrarily add some values and sort of decrease? For example, you had lambda one is equal to two, and then lambda two you had was 0.5 uh, in, into I think 10 power minus four. Now, we could have said something like, why not we add, you know, let's say 0 0.01 to both. So, so right, that would have meant we, this would have become 2.01. This would have become, let's say, 0 0.01 approximately. And this and the kappa would have been 2.01 by 0 0.01, which would have been roughly 200. So, we could have brought down the, the spread, right, drastically by just adding some number. But the point is, how do we add these numbers, right? We can't arbitrarily add something. And right? we cannot simply make a matrix stable by simply arbitrarily adding some entries. But here, if you see, okay, you know, two a transpose a, right? We are adding something, but what we are adding is not uh, is not arbitrary. We are we are bringing in a prior in the form of this matrix q transpose q multiplied by lambda, which is a regularization parameter, and now something sensible is being added to a transpose a in order to make it stable. So even if originally a transpose a was not invertible, now even even you know it is even lending invertibility to a transpose a. It is improving you know improving its condition number and so on, right, in order to be able to solve for an x hat that is now a regularized solution. Right? This kind of a regularization is called Tikhonov Miller regularization. Okay, Miller regular. In fact, if I write, let, 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 let me write it down in a, in a kind of a better manner. Now, you have in general what is called a Tikhonov Miller regularization. The, the, I mean, right, the idea of bringing, bringing or bringing in a trade-off between, so you have a cost that is of the form of an observation term plus some gamma times a prior, okay, where you can control, right? So it's like saying, so regularization amounts to saying that if I have a lot of confidence in my observation, the sense that my, 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 uh, my, uh, my noise is very little, then I would go with a low gamma because then I don't have to use my prior too much. But on the other hand, if I have a very noisy observation, I might want to, you know, want to increase my gamma because then I will I will bank more on more on a prior, right? So this kind of a trade-off, right, between uh, okay, between how much of observation do you want to do you want to use and how much of the prior do you want to use? What are the relative weightage you want to give to both of them in order to be able to arrive at an x hat that is that is reasonably acceptable is what is called a regularization theory, and this is called thickeno Miller regularization, and this comes under a deterministic. Okay, so if you see, right, what we have done is really a really a deterministic regularization. There is there is a way to do stochastic regularization also, and in fact, it's interesting that these two areas actually meet somewhere under certain conditions. But stochastic is more, can I say, uh, can I say, general than a deterministic regularization. 
and even even this kind of regularization uh, you can have in fact right uh, different kinds of terms here for example we have restricted ourselves to l2 norm but then it's also very common to use an l1 norm okay an l1 norm is also possible to use for example right you can have plus you know when i said uh, gradient right of uh, gradient of x you could have used and used an l1 norm plus lambda times plus norm dx y and then you could have used an you know l1 norm what is also called uh, you know a total variation prior and so on the idea behind using an l1 norm for the prior is that you know you expect you know the natural gradients the images of natural the gradients of natural images are typically sparse okay so which is a which is reason this has been observed and therefore right, using a sparsity on the gradient of the image right is some prior that let's say people know they plotted the plotted several natural images gradients they have plotted and they found that the gradients of natural images are typically sparse and therefore right, if you bring in something like this then this can help actually preserve your edges even higher in a kind of a superior manner as compared to having a prior which is e which is an l2 norm something like the ones that we saw norm qx square and so on but the but then the ability of an l2 norm to keep the edges intact is not as good as the as the l1 norm okay but there are there are there are optimization algorithms right that one can one can use in order to solve an l2 l1 combination okay lasso lasso is is is, is one such thing which uses what is called admm Okay, ADMM method. Right? We will not get to go into the details of these methods, but the point is, right? As you know, once you frame the optimal frame uh, the cost function, then there are then there are these optimization methods available out there which you can directly borrow, right, in order to be able to solve these problems. Okay, this is called this is called really you know Miller uh, Miller regularization. Uh, and uh, and I just wanted to wanted to say that uh, right to say that you should be able to appreciate the fact that. that the prior information that right, enters in a certain form right in order to be able to improve the stability of your of your final solution okay that is the that is in fact the goal right of the of, of this kind of regularization theory uh we will we will uh, you know as a follow up right we'll see what is what is stochastic regularization and try to see right I mean, what is the relation it has with respect to with respect to a deterministic regularization and so on